Hello dear subscribers and watchers, how are things on your side? This is me, Webs from Slidenet here. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to insert data inside our SQLite database. In the previous video, I talked about the two methods that you can use to insert data. And we also talked about something called null column hack. If you guys haven't seen that video, please go ahead and check the link in the description text below where I have included a link to the other videos as well where I have defined how to create the schema of a database. So here in Eclipse, what I have is nothing great, just a username, enter your username here, enter your password in this edit text, and when you click on add user, in, inside the button, we have the on click attribute with add user method being called, you go to main activity here, it simply says public void add user. And here I have done nothing great, just found the edit text, initialized it, and got the value of the username and the password from that edit text and ultimately if you go and see our Wivs helper class this is the class where we define the schema of our database so there is a column called i underscore id under name and password I have talked about this in my previous videos about creating an SQLite schema and then there's the create table statement with the table name UID integer primary auto and name and password so that is all and inside the on create method I simply create the table while in the on upgrade method I delete the table and recreate it depending on what changes have been made. So now the point comes about inserting data inside our database. Now we can do that inside our main activity as well no issues. If you guys remember first we need to create an object of the class called content values which acts like a map inside which we can put our key value pairs. So I'm gonna say content values dot put and as you guys notice there's a whole lot of options here that say string key, boolean value, byte value, string value. So we need this one which says string key and string value. Now here what is expected is that the name of the key that you give here is the name of the column in your table. And the value that you want to put inside that column goes in the second part as value. For example in the key section I should say something like Wivs helper. And as you guys notice right now we have a nice problem. If you go to our Wivs helper. What I want to do is access this name field over there so that I can make it as a key. But this is private over here which means it is only accessible inside this class. Now I could easily create a method that gives me access to the column but think about this. You don't want anybody else other than your class to access these columns and these statements over here. Because they can be tampered with and your database can be destroyed in that process. And hence what we are going to do is create a class right here that is going to interact very closely with this class Wivs helper. So I'm going to remove the content value statement over here and go back here to our Wivs helper and the first thing I'm going to do is rename this to something else. I'm going to say refactor, rename and call this as Wivs database adapter. Now what am I trying to do? Let me show you exactly what is happening. I'm going to click finish here and now this class has been renamed to Wivs database adapter. I'm going to cut everything inside this class that is there just cut everything control X and I'm gonna make a class inside this which will be called public class webs helper Now again I don't want this to be public since I'm gonna say sim only class webs helper over here just paste everything inside control shift F to format stuff and cut this extend statement from the outer class and put it here to our inner class so you guys are like hey what the hell is going on so inside this Wivs database adapter class which is the outer class that I have my idea is to create that insert method over here so let me show you exactly what I'm gonna do here I'm gonna say public void insert data something like this and I'm gonna ask two things in this method one the name that I wanna insert the other the password that I wanna put right and now I can directly get a reference to Wivs helper here by saying Wivs helper helper over here and this is gonna be null. Now inside this method I'm gonna initialize this by saying helper equals to new Wivs helper. But there is one sweet little problem that is Wivs helper class requires a context over here right. So I'm gonna remove this statement here make another constructor for our Wivs database adapter have a context passed from somewhere else and initialize our Wivs helper now by saying Wivs helper context. So this point everything looks good. Now I'm still sure that you guys are wondering why this is an inner class and outer class don't worry you will find out very shortly so here inside the insert data I'm gonna make a content values object just like I did earlier I'm gonna say content values content values here content values and now inside this I'm gonna put our fields that is content values dot 
put string key and string value so here the key will be the name of the column inside which I want to put the data right and that is gonna be webs helper dot and this is the reason why we made it as an inner class because as you guys notice now the variables are all private I have not included any method and yet since I'm in the outer class I can access these variables without anybody else ever gaining access to these variables and this is the reason why I have made this as an inner class so here I'm gonna simply say waves helper dot name and the value as name over here that's gonna be inserted same way I'm gonna put password so at this point everything is almost done there's just one step more we need the SQLite database object with which we can perform the right or, or the insert operations how do we get it very simple we use the WIPS helper that we made earlier and say get writable database this is gonna give us the SQLite database object that we want so badly I'm gonna simply call it DB over here and then we can say DB dot insert and as you guys notice everything is in place this takes three arguments first is the name of the table where you want to insert stuff that is gonna be WIPS helper dot table name second is the null column hack which I discussed about in my previous video I'm gonna put null over here the third is the content values object for which I'm gonna pass content values over here and that is all that needs to be done now this returns a long I'm gonna store that inside this value ID this ID is gonna be negative if something went wrong otherwise the ID indicates the row ID of the column that was successfully inserted so now I can return this from here and I can say return ID over here and go back to our void make it long here and the idea is the main activity will determine whether the insert was successful or not based on what happened here so as you guys notice everything is in picture now again there are two options you can either make this class as a non static inner class or you can make this as a static inner class now I will be talking about the four different types of inner classes and a lot more detail in my object oriented Java video so if you guys do want to hear about it then you should check those videos out so here I'm gonna make this a static the reason why I will do that is because in Java if you guys remember there's a principle of least privilege which says that grant something only the minimum access it needs to perform its required task now when this is a normal class like waves helper here then this waves helper class can access the outer class that is waves database adapters non static fields but if this is a static class here it can access only the static fields of the outer class and not only that a non static nested class exists as a separate instance for every different object of the outer class now like I said if you guys are not clear exactly about what is happening I will be talking about this in a lot more detail in my Java video so please check those videos out so here let me further continue to my main activity where I can perform the insert as you guys notice at this point we have a lot of errors here I'm gonna just remove this statement and now I'm gonna say wibs helper dot insert data that's all I need to say name as a user the password as pass and we are done so here that's gonna return us a long remember I'm gonna say long here so at this point I have my long ID and here I'm gonna simply check if the ID is less than zero then something well went wrong otherwise everything was great and in both cases I just need to display a message now if you guys have seen my earlier videos there's already a class called message that has a static method message which takes a context and a string message and simply shows a toast so let me use that class inside our main activity here where I can directly say message dot message has the context as this the message here will be unsuccessful and the message below will be successfully inserted a row so at this point everything looks pretty good let's run this with our Jenny motion emulator and figure out what is happening so at this point if you guys notice there's my username password I'm gonna say the username as webs the password as maybe one two three four five six and I'm gonna click add user and it says unsuccessful so let's go and find out so at this point there's a nice little error here it says that webs table has no column named password while compiling insert into webs table the problem is I already tested this application and at that time there was no password column and now I have made a change here but I have not changed the version number at the top which is the database version inside our webs helper class so let me find our webs helper right here 
make the database number as in as four because it was previously three. So at this point, if I select this and if I click run again, let us see what happens. Constructor called. If I see vivs here again, if I see the password as one two three four five six, add user. And as you guys notice, it says on upgrade is called because the database was changed. The on create is again called with the new structure and it says successfully inserted a row and that means our insert is working now at the moment I cannot show you what are the contents inside the database because we are still to run the select queries and the other types of queries out there but bear with me in the upcoming videos we will work on the same example and I'm gonna show you guys all the queries that can be done with the SQLite database in the meantime if you guys do like what you saw please like this video share this video subscribe to our channel and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a nice day.